Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. Hey, sorry I took the whole of last week off uh, for uploads for this channel. That's because my uh, main work was mega busy last week, so I had like no time to spare uh, to make whiskey videos. But we're back, and back to the regular upload schedule, so expect plenty of uploads in the immediate future. Today, we're going to be asking the question, can Texas whiskey do double oaked well? And I know that might sound like an odd question, but the reason I ask that question is because Texas is notorious for its heat. So the more time a whiskey spends in a barrel, the more uh, syrupy and thick and astringent it gets over those, those hot summers there in Texas. Well, Garrison Brothers have the Balmaria, which is their take on a Texas bourbon that's double oaked. And uh, here's the thing that you got to know about it. Let me go ahead. I'll go ahead and pour this so it has a chance to open up a little bit. Then I'll talk a bit about what makes this what it is. Cool. Big shout out to uh, Damn Thrice for sending in this whiskey sample for me. I appreciate you, brother, and your generosity. You've sent me in some uh, pretty cool stuff over the past year or so. Anyways, uh, let's talk about the Balmaria for a minute. So, again, this is Garrison Brothers. This is down in Texas. It's hot. And a lot of Texas whiskeys do not spend a lot of time aging because they simply cannot spend a lot of time aging because the whiskey goes from whiskey to syrup pretty quickly and then it's undrinkable. Now here's the thing that's interesting about the Balmaria. It comes in at $179 MSRP, so about 180 bucks to get a bottle of this. And I have, I've read a lot of like scores and reviews from people, not tasting notes, but just like their final, This I like to do this when I know that I'm going to try something for the first time. I like to avoid tasting notes from other uh, tasters and writers and reviewers and instead just go to the final verdicts to see how they score it. And the thing is, it looks like people are pretty split on this bottle. I see some people just praising it for its flavor profile and then others who are like, listen, for 180 bucks, why would I ever spend that kind of money on a four-year-old bourbon? Yeah, it's interesting. So I'm wondering where I'm going to fall on this. But the reason why it is $180, and you might think, man, why would you spend that much? How can you justify putting that kind of a price tag on this whiskey? The answer is not on what you're getting, but what on the distiller is losing. It's an interesting part of the distillation process. But essentially what's happening is they are making, let's say they're making this much whiskey and they're putting it into the barrels. And then because of the heat in Texas, they take a massive loss due to evaporation. So what was this amount of whiskey is now whittles down to this much whiskey. The rest of it went into the air in the warehouse and just evaporated out of the barrel. So they have to cover their losses. That's now whiskey they cannot monetize. They can't sell, they can't turn a profit on that stuff. They have to just give it up it's the angel share and the angels in Texas are greedy as heck. So that's one of the reasons this comes in at $180 is because the distiller needs to make up their loss. It's proof down to 115 proof. It spends four years in a primary barrel and then one year in a secondary barrel. So it is a double oaked uh, bourbon. Now I have not seen this on their website, so take this with a grain of salt, but most things, most information I've looked up via third party on the Balmaria. It's the, it's an undisclosed mash bill, but a couple of websites now have actually listed a mash bill, even though the website for Garrison Brothers does not. So I don't know if this is definitive or if maybe they just got their wires crossed, but a couple of places have actually said it's not undisclosed. It's 74% corn, 15% wheat, and 11% malted barley. Now that is, as far as I know, unverified. So take that again with a grain of salt. So $180. For this bottle of 115 proof four year old bourbon. <laughs> Shall we try it? Let's get in here and nose this, yeah? First thing that's surprising to me is I expected, due to its proof and its color, like look at the color in this. Like that is like a rich mahogany. That looks like maple syrup, doesn't it? First thing that's surprising to me is that I'm getting a lot of oak on the nose, but it's soft oak. It's not harsh oak. It's not bitter oak. It's actually kind of delicate oak. A little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. Nose makes me think of coffee cake. Actually makes me think of uh, like a tiramisu. You know, those lady fingers with the espresso in them, and the cream and the chocolate, and real, real woody. <laughs> it's actually not an unappealing nose at all. I just kind of like that nose. Let's try it, cheers. There it is. That is a very barrel forward sip. The delicate oak we got on the nose, 
it comes back around late in the finish. But most of this experience is really tannic dry oak. We do, uh, our family really loves to do wood fires. We do, we do uh, fires in the fire pit all the time. And uh, sometimes in the backyard, sometimes in the front driveway because we like being out there where the neighbors, when they're taking walks with their kids, they can stop by, pull up a seat. We got plenty of chairs out for everybody. Our neighborhood knows if there's a fire going at, at the Wright's house, they can stop on in. So I'm very accustomed to cleaning out uh, charred wood. This has a very strong charred wood note to it. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon and dark chocolate. Tons of oak and some holiday spices. Towards the tail end of the palate and then going into the finish. Like I said, that delicate oak is there, but also this espresso note as well. Like coffee grounds, maybe. How do I feel about that? It's definitely an experience. You know, a lot of times you sip something and you're like, just enjoying it for the flavor. Other things you, you sip on them and you know that they are unique, that they're different, that it's a trip down a street you're not accustomed to. A little bit of a detour, a bit of an experience. This falls into that category, for me at least. This is an experience. This is like, hey, you wanna know what Texas whiskey's like if you <laughs> if you finish, it's done, but then you decide, you know what, let's finish it again. Let's put it in another barrel for another year, see what happens. It's chewy, it's thick, it's bitter, it's dry, but there is some sweetness in there too to help offset it a bit. So if I were to give this a score per my scale, frankly, the most challenging part for me is gonna be the price point. To me, the price point is like the biggest knock you could have against this whiskey. I did enjoy sipping it. I liked the flavor profile. I don't have like major complaints about the way that the whiskey tastes, but we're gonna talk about that relationship between flavor, the experience that we're experiencing, and the price that we paid for it. For me, $180, is a huge ask because a lot of times if I want something that blends both lots of the those charred oak notes with some of the chocolatey notes and and the sweet notes in there too I mean $90 is what I spent for my Jack Daniels 12 year right like 90 to 100 bucks for JD 12 which is Obviously, it's not four-year-old whiskey. You're talking a 12-year-old whiskey that has some of those same notes, but then expands on them, and I think maybe some better ways. This is really good, so don't get me wrong there. I don't want to knock how the whiskey tastes. I think it tastes very good. The problem for me is that 180 bucks is just a lot to spend for that experience. And man, I don't envy uh, Texas distillers because of the challenge that they have just with their climate to make a good product. They're really limited in many ways because of that climate. So it's a challenge for them to sort of embrace their climate, work around their climate, and find out what their core identity is for Texas whiskey. I think this is really good, and I don't argue that the price tag is fair and reasonable. I think it probably is pretty fair and reasonable just based off the evaporative loss, all the whiskey that they lost that they can't sell. I understand why they have to price it that high to have something that's five years in their warehouse, losing all of that product to the open air. It makes sense. Does it make sense for the consumer though? That's the question. I'm not sure that I would spend 180 bucks on this, but I am very grateful to have tried it. I think it's good whiskey. So I think because of that, I'm gonna put it at the top end of my maybe buy. So 6.9. I'm gonna give this a 6.9 because I think this is really tasty. Maybe buy it. Maybe buy it if you're interested in having the experience of saying, hey, I really like to try Texas whiskey that spent some extra time in an extra barrel to get that Texas double oaked vibe off of a product, maybe buy if you had 180 bucks to blow. If you don't have 180 bucks to blow, maybe pass on it. The more I smell this, the more it actually reminds me of Balcones products in a lot of ways too, which isn't super surprising either. But there you go. Uh, thanks again, Thrice. I appreciate you sending in the sample. This is tasty and I will enjoy the rest of it. Thank you so much for tuning into the video today. If you enjoyed it, let me know by leaving a like in the video as that's the best free way to support the content here on YouTube. And feel free to subscribe for additional whiskey content. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters. I appreciate you guys. I just uh, was able to spend the Patreon money from last month, uh, cash that out and spend it. I uh, gave it to a guy, uh, actually Matt, who's in our community. Took a trip to Kentucky while he's there. He picked up some stuff for me, courtesy of the Patreon supporters. So thank you so much. We've got some bottles coming in that we can review this week. Cheers, my friends. May you live richly and get better with age. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.